Jiu-Jitsu athletes use this foreign training method to get faster at scrambling to the back, shooting in for takedowns, and passing the guard. By adding in dynamic effort work into your training, you'll be faster, more explosive, and better equipped to win more matches and get injured less. What's going on guys? My name is Josh Setledge and I am the BJJ Strength Coach. And in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down the dynamic effort method and how you can use this foreign training method to increase your speed and explosiveness on the mat so you can quickly scramble to dominant positions, blow past your opponent's guard, and be explosive in all of your takedowns. And before I tell you all about the dynamic effort method, I did wanna let you know that if you are interested in getting stronger for jujitsu so you can win more matches and get injured less, I have a free four-week strength program that I'd love to send you. All you got to do to get that training program is just click the link in the description below. The dynamic effort method is a method of training that's featured within the conjugate system. The conjugate system is a system of athletic training that was originally developed by the Olympic strength coaches of the Soviet Union. It was then further developed and widely popularized in the United States by Louis Simmons of Westside Barbell. The conjugate system focuses on using three different types of training methods to develop athleticism. The max effort method, which if you want to learn more about the max effort method, you can watch my video on the max effort method by clicking right here. The dynamic effort method and the repetition effort method. The dynamic effort method focuses on using submaximal loads or lighter weights and moving them at maximum speed to help increase force production and improve power and explosiveness. As an athlete, improving your ability to absorb and produce force as quickly as possible has a massively positive effect in all other areas of your athleticism on the mat. Remember, no one ever lost a match because they were too fast. When you use the dynamic effort method to improve your ability to quickly absorb and produce force, you also improve your ability to react quickly to the movements of your opponent. You also decrease the amount of rest you need to be explosive for multiple efforts, and you also increase physical resiliency, which ultimately helps you decrease your risk of injury on the mat. When it comes to using the dynamic effort method to improve your jujitsu performance, the dynamic effort method is essentially your speed training in the gym. The dynamic effort method can be broken down into lower body sessions and upper body sessions. During these sessions, you'll pick a compound lift or some form of a plyometric exercise and perform multiple sets and reps, focusing on moving as quickly and as explosively as possible on every rep. The amount of sets and reps that you need is going to vary based on your training and where you're at in your jujitsu competition prep. But if you're new to using the dynamic effort method, I would suggest starting out with eight to 12 sets of one to three reps. Remember, the main goal of dynamic effort training is to take a sub-maximal load or a lighter weight and move it as fast as possible. For dynamic effort lower body exercises, the weight should move like you're jumping onto a box. And when you're performing dynamic effort exercises for the upper body, the weight should move like you're throwing a punch. Each week, you should have one dynamic effort session for the lower body and one dynamic effort session for the upper body. According to Louis Simmons, for best results, these dynamic effort sessions should take place 72 hours after your max effort training sessions. My favorite dynamic effort exercises for the lower body are going to be banded speed deadlifts and banded speed box squats. For the upper body, my personal favorites are a banded speed bench press and a banded landmine press. For best results, dynamic effort training should take place on a three week pendulum wave. This means that you progressively increase the difficulty for three weeks before switching out exercise variations. For example, in week one, if you perform eight singles of banded speed deadlifts, in week two, you can either add one or two sets in volume, or you can add 5% of weight to the barbell. And in week three, you can either add one to two more sets, or you can add an additional 5% of weight to the barbell. When talking about the dynamic effort method, it's very important that we also talk about accommodating resistance because the main intent of dynamic effort work is to move as explosively and as fast as possible. You can use accommodating resistance to stimulate greater force production, which is gonna help you develop greater speed and explosiveness. If we take an exercise like the bench press, the exercise is often easiest at the top at lockout and it gets harder when it's at the bottom on our chest. Accommodating resistance essentially allows you to add more weight on the bar at the top position where you're strongest and proportionately decrease the weight on the bar as you get closer to your weakest position. Two of the most popular forms of accommodating resistance are bands and chains. With bands and chains for an exercise like the bench press, as you press the weight up, 
you have to continue increasing the amount of force that you're applying into the bar while the load and or band tension increases as you get closer to lockout or your strongest position. However, if you're a beginner, I would not suggest using accommodating resistance for dynamic effort work. Accommodating resistance works best with athletes who have already been strength training for a few years. Listen up, I need to give you two warnings about using the dynamic effort method. Warning number one, don't go heavy. Remember, the goal of dynamic effort work is to move as fast and explosively as possible with sub-maximal load. At any point during your dynamic effort sets, if you begin to slow down, you need to decrease the weight. Warning number two, don't dilly-dally. You need to keep your rest period short. A major benefit of the dynamic effort method when you're using it properly is that it's great in helping you improve your ability to be explosive across multiple efforts with very little rest. If you're just starting to use the dynamic effort method, keep your rest periods no longer than two minutes and gradually work towards being able to hit one dynamic effort set at the top of every minute. If you guys got value out of this video and want to be updated when more videos like this are dropping, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Catch you guys later. Peace.